If you really love cream cheese, and really, who doesn't? You're going to want to stay tuned. Hello friends, I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for stopping by to see us today. If you're not already subscribed, we would love to have you. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We're on our way to our next big milestone. We're hoping to hit 10,000 subscribers soon. So if you enjoy our content, we would love to have you as one of the new subscribers who helps us get there. Today, we're gonna to be canning cream cheese. Yep. I did not realize you could can cream cheese. I thought cream cheese could not be canned. And I was pretty bummed out about this because honestly, cream cheese is one of my most favorite foods and it's a huge staple in our home. We use cream cheese all the time. Not only do the kids love to have it smeared on their bagel, but I also use it a lot in cooking. Cream cheese chicken chili is one of our big family favorites. It's super quick and easy and delicious, and those are the kind of recipes that we really love. But I also use it in a lot of my low-carb cooking that I do for myself. I make a lot of casseroles where I sub in cauliflower for the noodles and cream cheese as part of the sauce. And so we go through a lot of cream cheese. Like everything else, I like to stock up when it goes on sale. My price point for cream cheese is usually a dollar for an eight ounce block. When I find it for that price, I buy as much as I can fit in my fridge. And honestly, it lasts a really long time in the refrigerator, much longer than it says it will. As long as you keep that foil pack intact, it's gonna last for probably years, no kidding. But I do worry about having cream cheese if the grid goes down. So I was thinking it's too bad you can't can cream cheese. And then I thought about it and I said, well, people can butter and people can milk. So I wonder if you can can cream cheese. And I started researching it and I found that yes, you can can cream cheese, plenty of people do it. It's not a tested and approved method, so this is Rebel Canning, but I found that sometimes the best test is the test of time. You know the things that our mothers and our grandmothers have done for years and years, time-tested methods. I recently found cream cheese at my Walmart for a mind-blowing 82 cents per eight ounce block. I have never seen a price like that before. They had the two packs for $1.62, so I bought a ton of them, and I'm gonna try canning some for the first time. Now what we're gonna start by doing is cutting up the blocks of cream cheese and melting them down gently. You can do that over a double boiler or you can do it in your microwave. I'm gonna use my microwave. So we're gonna melt them down and then we're gonna put them into half pint jars and process from there. So what I've got here is I have got eight blocks of cream cheese. I have got eight half pint jars. I've got uh, two different kinds. I've got the taller, skinnier ones and I've got the shorter, squatter ones. I feel like these would be good for like dipping into to spread out of and if you're putting it in a recipe that these would be okay. So I'm gonna try um, half of each and see how I like it. I also have my handy little batter bowl here that I can put in the microwave. So I'm just gonna start by chunking up the cream cheese into smaller pieces and putting it into the, into the bowl. So I've got six of those eight ounce blocks in here and as you can see it's getting pretty full. So what I'm gonna do is start by microwaving this a little bit and then I think it should go down a little bit so I can fit the last two blocks. And now we should have plenty of room for the other two blocks. So now I have got all 64 ounces of that cream cheese in here and I'm going to start microwaving it at 30 second intervals and stirring in between each one until it's all melty and ready to go in the jars. Alright guys, now this is looking pretty good. It's very soft. I'm able to stir it um, really easily. There's no clumps or chunks left in this. So I think at this point we're ready to put this in the jars. Now that was probably no more than four or five minutes total. I did 30 second intervals and I stirred it in between each interval. So now we're gonna go ahead and put it in the jars. I do have um, my canning funnel. I might use that on the taller jars, but I think I'm gonna be able to get it into these shorter jars without it. It might be easier, but we will see. Now I can definitely wipe the rims when I'm all finished. So if I get a little on there, it's not a big deal, but I am gonna to try to pack it down as I put it in because there will be less 
debubbling to do later. We do want about an inch head space. I'm thinking that's going to be pretty good once it's debubbled. But let me do the rest of these and then we will see how it's doing. If I wanted to be really accurate, I could weigh these jars as I was going to make sure they each had an equal amount. But as long as the headspace is even, I'm going to go with the assumption that each of these jars is going to be just about eight ounces of cream cheese, one block. That'll make an easy conversion for recipes. All right, now this is where I may end up needing to use the canning funnel, but we'll see. All right, so now I've got eight jars filled, and like I said, that used almost all of the cream cheese, so that's about one block in each jar. There is a little bit left in here, and I may be able to add that to some of these jars after I get the bubbles out, because the levels could go down a little bit, but we'll see, or we might just have a little bit left over. So I have a few different tools here to use for debubbling these and getting the air pockets out. I have a small, flexible silicone spatula. I have my headspace and debubbling tool my plastic one that I really like and then I have this plastic piece of a children's chopstick I'm using plastic and silicone because they won't harbor any kind of bacteria like wood might and they don't have these are all one piece they don't have any cracks or crevices that might harbor bacteria so I'm gonna start with these shorter jars I feel like these might be easier to do and just really work the air pockets out of these all the way down to the bottom into the middle you don't have to worry too much about it getting up on the edges of the jar but we will wipe the rims before we add the lids and process now as I'm going along I think my favorite tool for debubbling is the little piece of a chopstick but this scraper is pretty handy for scraping off the edges of the jar rim and smoothing down the product on the inside Okay, so now that I've got all the jars filled and debubbled, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the rims. I have a clean paper towel. I did put a little bit of vinegar on this paper towel. Now, if you were canning milk, you obviously wouldn't use vinegar. I use the vinegar when I can my meats. You don't want any fat or oil, anything on the rims of the jars that might help, that might inhibit the seal. But with cream cheese, it's actually already pretty acidic, and that's why we're able to water bath can it. So I have seen people using the vinegar to wipe the rims. I'm just gonna be very careful to keep it just on the rim and just clean off the rim of the jar because the acidity and water content of cream cheese are a little bit closer to things like tomatoes and jams and jellies. And that is why uh, people have been water bath canning it with success for many years. Definitely cleaning these well because we did get quite messy while we were filling them because I didn't use a funnel. I think it would have actually been more difficult with the funnel personally. Okay, we've got jars filled and jars wiped, so I'm going to go ahead and add the lids. I do have my water bath canner behind me on the stove. Um, it's got water in it and it is warm but not boiling. These jars are not particularly warm, so we definitely don't want to put them into hot, hot water. But I put enough water in there to cover these jars, hopefully by an inch or two, which is what we need. And I do have my electric kettle going over there in case I need to add some more water. I have taller and shorter jars, so this is going to be a little bit different. I actually don't know if you're supposed to do that the two different sizes of jars together. So if anybody knows differently, please let me know down in the comments. So here are eight jars ready to go in the water bath canner. All right, so let's see if we can get these jars all in the canner. All 
right there we go so I've got them all in the can and now I'm gonna lower these down into the water and I'm gonna make sure that the water is covering them by at least one to two inches and then we're gonna bring it up to a boil okay so now we've got this at a rolling boil I'm gonna put on the lid and we are gonna let this go for 25 minutes now because this is not a tested and approved recipe we don't have an exact time everyone does it differently I've seen people who process it for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes. I'm going with 25, somewhere in the middle just to be safe, although most people I see do it for 20 minutes and I think 20 minutes would be fine. I'm gonna do 25 minutes. Now when I say this is not approved, it means that this has not been tested by any of the alphabet agencies. The Center for Home Food Preservation, the FDA, the USDA. But as we well know, sometimes approval by those alphabet agencies is more about politics than it is about science. I'm trusting the test of time. My kitchen, my rules your kitchen, your rules. You would have to do your own research and decide what you're comfortable with in your kitchen. Okay, now that my 25 minutes is up, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna take the lid off and take it off the heat and I'm gonna let it set for 15 minutes before I remove the jars so they can cool down slowly. All right, here we go. We've got eight little half pints of cream cheese. I already hear a lot of the lids popping and I'm just gonna let these cool completely and check the seals and make sure that we're good to go. So that's how I canned my cream cheese. I am super excited to have some cream cheese in my pantry, shelf stable, so that I know in a grid down emergency, I will still have my cream cheese. This could also be good for things like camping and travel. I know my sister likes to bring food with her when she travels. She travels with small children and she usually ends up with some extra baggage allowance and she'll pack food right with her. So when she gets to her destination, she does not have to go to the grocery store. She can cook food in her rented condo and she saves herself time and money. She got really excited when I told her about my can and cream cheese and she said she would want a jar. So I just have to do some research and find out if canned, um, if pressure canned foods can travel in an airplane. I'm not sure about that one. So if you know, let me know down in the comments because I passed that cream cheese chicken chili recipe on to her and it is now one of her family favorites as well. I'm sure that's why she wanted a can of cream cheese. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. We have videos about canning, gardening, prepping, really anything to do with emergency preparedness and self-sufficiency. And we would love to have you as a subscriber. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a bagel emoji down in the comments. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.